Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Tom Drivis of Appia Energy. How are you today, Tom? Great, great, um, Tracy. Well, I'll tell you, everybody was clamoring, rare earths, rare earths prior to COVID-19. And then after COVID-19, I know we've been competing with biotech and a lot of other demands, you know, and priorities. But let's talk about Appia Energy and the competitive advantages for Appia. Just let's start there, Tom. Thank you. Uh, good question, uh, Tracy. Um, Appia has a uh, Aussie Lake project in northern Saskatchewan. It has uh, a world-class uh, high-grade rare earth. Basic, especially uh, most of them, about a quarter of them, they're critical rare earth. So um, we think that Appia could be the feed, uh, could be feeding the um, uh, North America in terms of rare earths, uh, and because, as you know, North America is looking to. Um, have their own um, uh, supply of, of rare earth. Well, Tom, I appreciate your some of your competitive advantages, but I think you're being rather humble here. Many people in the industry are telling me you have some of the most high-grade rare earths in your monazite. Is this correct? Uh, this is correct, um, uh, Tracy. Uh, we've got monazite on surface that is running up to 85%. Uh, we've shown it to people in the industry, uh, and they know, they've seen all the other projects, or most of the other projects, and they're basically telling us that this is one of a kind. They haven't seen anything like it, so we're quite excited. Yes, Aussie's Leg could be one of the better or the best projects uh, out there. Well, I have some amazing experts that work on our team, like Jack Lifton, and he's telling me you're one of his top favorites that he's watching in North America. So speaking of location, you're in Saskatchewan, and a lot of time people who are involved in rare earths are, con are concerned about the extraction processes and how that's actually going to take place. I think you have some of those fundamentals already in place. Can you talk about that? Uh, Tracy, that's a good question. Uh, location uh, is very important where the project is. Uh, Aussie uh, Lake, the uh, Appius Rare Earth Project, is located in northern Saskatchewan, just uh, about 30 kilometers northeast of uh, Uranium City. It's an area that has produced uh, uranium for many years, and there were a number of mines. And um, uh, Saskatchewan is, uh, is also produ uh, is producing high-grade uranium, up to 20% uranium. So the province uh, is familiar with uh, uranium radioactivity, uh, thorium. And um, uh, the other good thing is that the uh, there are existing um, facilities in Saskatchewan that we can use, like uh, the Saskatchewan Research Council has uh, a pilot plan, a uh, rare earth pilot plan in, in Saskatoon. Uh, that is ready and they have the experience. So, so this is available to, to uh, Appia for, uh, 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 for its uh, rare earth. So for all of you out there that are following the rare earths industry, a lot of us are very concerned about the impact of COVID-19 on our supply. We know a lot of the big factories were closed in China. Tom, do you have any comments about how this might affect prices and, and our supply in general post-COVID-19, or is it too early to even comment? Uh, Tracy, good another good question here. Um, COVID-19 has affected everybody. And not only in Canada and China and the world, basically. Uh, but then we have short-term effect and long-term effect. Uh, you know, the last couple of months, uh, the next few months, uh, that's short-term. Um, but rare earths are, are, are used in, in high-tech, is used in military applications, is used in electric vehicles. So we think that the, the demand is coming back. The, so uh, I don't think long-term uh, there's an issue, there will be an issue. I think that long term there is going to be increased uh, demand of rare earths, and, um, and, and that's, the, you know, that's the, 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 uh, you know, the whole thing into, in a nutshell. Basically. 
Well, I'll tell you, Tom, we got a lot of eyes watching Appia Energy, and I don't know that people understand that it's kind of a win-win formula. You also have uranium, and I just received a Department of Energy blog today that was talking about uh, how the U.S. should be looking at stockpiling these types of critical materials. So why don't you start by just giving Investor Intel audience a quick overview about your uranium project, which is also high grade, and perhaps your comments on stockpiling. Appia is, you're right, uh, Tracy, Appia has uh, both uranium and rare earths, and um, we have three uh, uh, high grade uh, exploration projects in, in, in around uh, in Saskatchewan, around the uh, Athabasca Basin. Uh, those are our model for those projects, and, and those projects are um, high, we're looking for high grade uh, uranium near surface and near um, existing uh, infrastructure, uh, uh, mills and, and roads. And um, so we're quite excited on those three projects and we're planning to do some work in the next uh, few weeks. Um, uh, we've done work there over the last few years. Uh, in addition to those three high-grade high um, uh, uranium projects in, in Saskatchewan, uh, we do have a huge resource in, in area like Ontario. We've got about uh, between uh, uranium, between uh, uranium in, in, in fair and indicated category, about 100, um, we have about 50, 55 uh, million pounds of uranium, and uh, and we also have uh, uh, about 170 to 180 million pounds of rare earths. Uh, those are basically in in uh, 43 on one um, uh, a 43 on one resource, but. They are in in in, um, in fair and indicated uh, category. So yes, uranium and rare earths are part of Appia, and 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 we're quite excited about both um, uh, both uranium and rare earth. And um, uh, in terms of the uh, your, your your other question, uh, which I already forgot, maybe you can repeat it. Uh, go ahead, uh, Tracy. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask you about stockpiling. I mean, this would obviously be very uh, advantageous for those of us concerned about sustainability and whether or not you think that the U.S. should be looking towards stockpiling to deal with some of these issues of critical materials. Should we have another pandemic, uh, heaven forbid, or some heaven forbid, or some other type of uh, world-class crisis? Uh, can you talk to us about that? Do you have an opinion on this? Um. We think that Apia thinks that um, the U.S. stockpiling and and um, uh, looking at uh, uh, processing rare earths in North America, it's a great idea. Uh, this COVID-19 uh, uh, virus uh, also brought the whole thing more closely to home. Uh, you know, the whole uh, a, a different, a better picture because. And most of the supply comes from uh, the, in terms of rare earth from China, uh, like 80, 85 percent, and that makes uh, uh, makes it very uh, difficult for uh, industries outside of China to uh, uh, depend on one a single source of supply. So therefore, the U.S. has looked at uh, uh, doing some more work, some uh, uh, funding uh, um, uh, extraction of rare earths in North America. In addition to that, they came out with the with the, some new um, uh, recommendations where they want they want to uh, uh, stockpile uh, uranium. Uh, North uh, U.S. or North America produce uranium. And recently, the U.S. government has allocated 150 million dollars um, for uh, stockpiling of uranium, and um, uh, that's that's really great news because. That would help the uh, uh, uranium uh, U.S. industry and uh, also uh, of the Canadian industry. Okay, so we have uranium, we have rare earths, and of course we have a pandemic which will undoubtedly intensify the need for these critical materials post-pandemic. So can you tell me what you plan for Appia Energy in the next quarter or two, Tom? Appia is uh, going to be active in the next uh, uh, few months. Uh, up to now, we were waiting because some of the most of the provinces in Canada were basically shut down because of the virus. Um, Saskatchewan uh, 
is great news because they have start opening up. They start opening up the the uh, uh, basically the industry, the the product, uh, and um, so uh, Apia will start exploring uh, in the next few weeks. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have we're planning an exploration program on our uh, uranium properties, the high grade uranium properties in in, in Saskatchewan, and. Then it will be followed up with the exploration and drilling on Oxus Lake uh, project. We think that it's going to happen in, in June or July, and we're going to be active for the rest of the, uh, for the year. Well, Tom, as always, it's a pleasure to speak to you, and we're going to have you on regularly. We're all following Appia Energy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Tracy.